Welcome to my 5-day itinerary through the southeastern part of the Italian peninsula, what is commonly known as the heel of the Italian boot, the Puglia region. And in today's vlog, I want to provide you with a lot of really interesting as well as useful information, but also showcase some of the most unique culture, its heartwarming people, as well as the deep history of this piece of land that is one of the least visited regions of the entire country. So please do not hesitate to click that like button and make sure that you are subscribed because we are going on a deep dive with white houses, delicious pasta, and overwhelming hospitality. Buongiorno from Bari, the capital of Puglia region. This is the south of Italy and I heard a lot of great things about this region. So today I want to start exploring the capital of the region and then I'll slowly move deeper and deeper into this entire province. And first, let's go check out some of the specialty food they have here in this bustling metropolis. Look at this, uh, panini de polpo. Huh? It's like um, an octopus uh, panini and it's so nice, honestly. It's just all of the, oh, it's like tomato, lettuce and everything. And to prove that they are actually, you know, into this kind of thing, look, the entire place has got polpo and inside, they have a large octopus on the ceiling. <laughs> Any quick walk within the old town of Bari will take you to the cathedral. This is probably the oldest structure in the entire town because it was an old Roman church and basically have been converted into this Romanesque style. And you can see every single tier has a different kind of animal on it. It is absolutely fantastic. And all of the details on the sills as well as every single column and all of the animals uh, from horses to humans to tigers to Cerberus it is truly a marvelous architecture example of the medieval times here in Italy well just a few steps over in the heart of basically the old town is what they call the Gastero Svevo look at this thing it's a gigantic castle constructed in the 12th century and then destroyed and then reconstructed by the Swabian king in the 13th century Yes, Svevo stands for Swabian. I know, it is very surprising given that, you know, those kings from the southwestern Germany who are so obsessed of putting pancakes in soups or rolling them up and calling them food called Mautagen somehow have the power to rule over a significant chunk of southern Italy during the 13th century. And you know you are in real Italy when old ladies are selling like fresh pasta on the streets like covered with just cloth. Wow, this is so pretty. Look at the chili pepper. And these, they are made from squid ink maybe, that's why. Oh, and these ones are so colorful.
tomato. Tá lá, o tá aqui em casa. Tomato. Olha. 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 And I love it that everywhere in the streets, under the arches, even in people's yards, there are just random shrines dedicated to random saints or all kinds of basically religious symbols, right? And you can see you can have, you know, master of art from here all the way to a different kind of master of art over here. <laughs> okay, okay. It is very insensitive for me to laugh, but like that is real funny. But honestly, this is actually the third oldest structure in the entire city. It is the Church of St. Martical. And it was built in the 11th century by like a bunch of um, uh, traders from North, from Venice, because uh, they kind of missed their homeland. So this is in the style of Northern Italy. And this is St. Nicholas Basilica. Yeah, it is just a basilica because something this impressive here in Bari is just, you know, second in place. In fact, it is only the second oldest building in the entire city. And oh, look at it. You can see the age truly shows in the front here. The facade is completely just lost its color. Yeah, but you can still see all of the detailed, intricate decorations. The church was originally built to house a relic from St. Nicholas, the miracle worker. Yeah, so basically he is a Russian saint who basically performed all kinds of miracles uh, for the poor. And then, you know, one of his relics was transported by 98 sailors and then down here into body and then they decided to build this basilica. And inside you can actually see where the relic was housed. And that is why everywhere you can see there's not only Italian, but also Russian because St. Nicholas is actually a Russian saint. He has never actually been here, but he is like super popular here for some reason. And here you can see there is a statue dedicated to St. Nicholas. Yeah, this looks like a normal church, right? Just some wooden benches, pretty mediocre decorations, and there are some weird arches in the middle. Why? Well, it is used so that they can support the massive gold ceiling.
And let's not forget, the entire Old Town is actually surrounded by Mediterranean Sea on all sides. So it is absolutely mandatory that you have a beautiful promenade accompanied with a beautiful backdrop. Let's go walk around. And right behind me, on the other side of these fishermen's boats, is the Margarita Theater, Teatro Margarita. And it is actually the first concrete building ever built in the entire city. This is because in 1911, the original wooden structure was destroyed in a fire, and then one of the societies decided to rebuild it in an Art Nouveau style in complete concrete. After a bit of a walk in the old town, I finally found a place that suits my taste. What kind of taste? No taste in particular. You see, here in this restaurant I found, that basically your hands do the talking. English is not exactly um, their strong suit and Italiano is basically non-existent for me. And um, I found this restaurant, it serves a really local body's food. So food from here and you can see the bread is already, ta-da, like the, exactly the one you see in the streets during the day. And also, it really goes really well with the house wine. Mm. Sure. And um, I'm, I'm really honored, honestly, because here the menu just comes set, like you don't even get to choose. And that's my favorite kind of menu because I have really, really hard time choosing. Hot zucchini. Oh, it's still steamy. Some kind of tomato, sun-dried tomato, uh, mozzarella, of course, with olives, and uh, some kind of vegetable. Oh, nice. There's always more food. And look at this. It's just tiny dishes coming up. Some kind of mashed potato. Okay, obviously, I had the last seat uh, in the restaurant because uh, there's only four tables, and the other three are completely occupied. And the large table behind me is taken over by a local family, so it's very noisy, pardon me. But now my main course is here. It's apparently called Cavatero with seafood. Yeah, that's uh, all you see here. Uh, it's made by the chef's mom. So definitely qualified as a local food. And I've never seen any dish like this. It's really, really, it's less saucy, but more like soupy. Yeah, it's really cool. 298 frozen patties later. Oh, so this I make. You made this? Uh -uh. Limoncello. But this lemon nominee in, in Sicilia. Ah. ah but because Puglia don't have good lemon. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Ah, cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is Limoncello. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> okay, of course, as a gift. Uh, um, the, the boss decided to give me a little shot of their limoncello and uh, as he explained, the lemon is from Sicily because here in Puglia, the lemon apparently is not good enough. This thing is so strong that you can keep it in the freezer and it doesn't freeze. That's how strong it is. And it's always served completely chilled. So, chin chin, cheers. Apparently here they call it bridinzi. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> okay, so of course, here in the restaurant, everyone's family. So, cheers, Chichi! Oh, 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 limoncello too strong, fortissimo! Italia! Italia! 
Now that is what I call Italian hospitality. Okay, okay, ready, 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 ready. 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 Okay. <laughs> Uno, due, tre. Cavatello! Grazie, grazie. Are you with As you watch me enjoy this ridiculously sweet breakfast next morning, here are some useful tidbits for your travel into Bari. First up is that if you arrive by air, it is extremely easy to board a twice hourly train directly into Bari Central Station. The main train station, the downtown, as well as the old town are all fairly walkable, since they are all within about one and a half kilometers of each other. My personal recommendation is to have at least one full day of your travel here in the capital city. And if you do it a little bit slower, two days is definitely required. And as you watch me taking a fast train directly into the next large town, Bredinsi, you need to know that traveling within Puglia is mostly done by car only, as a lot of the major attractions are not easily accessible with trains. But within these large cities, there are many frequent trains that pass by every hour, and you should have no problem purchasing ticket at the station. But you will have to pay a little bit of a premium. And here in the second largest city, the airport is very well connected to the rest of Europe, but sadly, it does not have a direct rail link into the city. So if you are arriving through Bredingsi Airport, you'll have a better luck starting directly with a rental car. Well, another day, another menuless restaurant. Yeah, I'm now sitting here in this restaurant and um, you just show up and you order from the counter because uh, they will just show you exactly what they have. And uh, I got this, a seafood gnocchi. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, bouncy boy, along with a seafood salad. Many secret patties later. This is Santa Maria, built by the Capucci monks. And it was actually built in about 1600s and demolished in the 20th, 20th century. And right behind me is St. John's at Sepultre. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that word. That's way too weird. And it is actually built in the 11th century. So it's almost 1000 years old. Yeah, this is actually built by a Norman king after he finished his conquest, a very successful conquest during the crusade in the 11th century. And he decided to build this based upon the holy secretary in Jerusalem. And yeah, that is why you can see all of these statues are quickly fading away because they have been sitting here for literally one millennium. Yeah, this is because here in Bredingsi, uh, the port right here has always been a very historically significant port as it is the go-to place if you want to depart Italy and go to the Middle East. So almost every single crusade has departed from here on the boat. And that's why after they come back, this is the first town they would uh, basically receive them from the Roman Catholic world. And that's why they decided to build a lot of those ancient structures right here in the town. And you can see this is actually the cathedral, of course, of the entire town of Redingsi. This was actually a very big pilgrimage site for all of the crusaders. So you can see on the top, you can see quite a lot of crusaders up there. This is because um, it was uh, basically the last proper um, like cathedral like for all of these crusaders before they embark on their trip that can potentially end up in death. So yeah, um, a lot, every single one of them, I think, actually will have to come here and uh, do their rites. And they will be hosted right here in the hospital uh, built by the Jerusalemites. And uh, they will always uh, basically rest here for one day. And then next day, go through here, go to the port and depart from Jerusalem. And this is it, the pride and symbol of the town of Bredinsi, the Roman columns. Yeah, these are the real deal. Constructed in the 2nd to the 3rd century AD, they were about 50 feet tall, so about 20 meters, and give or take. And look at this. Whew. Yeah, it must be so dominating back in the days. And sadly, during the seismic event in 18th century, the second one collapsed. Yeah, true story. They started with two because it marked the end of the Appian Way, which is one of the saying that all roads lead to Rome. Yeah, it started from Rome and leads all the way to the Adriatic Sea over there. And across from the Roman columns on the other side of the bay, you can see that majestic monument. It is a monument dedicated to the Italian sailors who died during World War One. 
Yeah, about 3,000 of them. It is shaped as like a rudder, so you know, the, the one that steers the ship, and uh, basically as a tribute and built, in, built for them in about the 1930s. Well, as I said, the Puglia is best explored when you have your own car. So after the half day tour of the historical center of Bredinsi, I really wish a magical car would pop out of nowhere to help me continue my journey here in the peninsula. Well, what a nice day. I wish I have a ride or some sorts. Oh, hey, miss. You uh, ride? Yeah, sure. Hey, Thank you. Oh, nice. Well, do not worry. This is not some random individual, but Callie and her friend John, with whom I will continue this spectacular journey. So as we cruise down the small Italian countryside road, we reminisced about what we have been doing for the past half a decade. And quickly, we were arriving at the small seaside village of Casa Labate. Look at all of the fields of artichokes. Just artichokes, artichokes, artichokes. You can say you can artichoke on that. Ha 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 ha. Okay, I'm so sorry. Okay, a few kilometers down the coast, I'm in this tiny village, Casa Labate. Very run down place. Yeah, look at the hotel. Look at the playground. Look at the private jetty of the hotel. Yeah, economy here is not doing too hot. Most of the places are abandoned. It looks like it has been abandoned for a few years. We sped down the highway and reached the last major city of the entire Puglian Peninsula, Lecce. Oh my God, look at this shop. It's all local productions. The olives. I think these are called taralis. Yeah, tarali. Typical brand here. Wow. Delicious food. Oh, fava beans. Oh, and of course, it's Puglia. You have to have orecchiette. Orecchiette of every single color imaginable. And again, to show the Roman roots of this entire region, you can see the entire amphitheater completely excavated, completely untouched actually. You can even see the hallway where all of the animals or you know the fighters will be released. And even out there, down uh, over there, you can see quite a lot of columns or hallways. These are the preparation places. And finally, we found a place for dinner serving local food, including, ta-da! Uh, the local pasta, of course. Right? You also get the pasta with the beans. Yeah, is it good? Mm. Yeah, good, huh? Nice. How is it, Callie? What, what, what did you get? No it's idea. A, it's a little bit like um, potato and then some greens with it. Oh, nice. Yeah, and that's just the primi prati. Uh, it's like the first course. And then everywhere here, if you want to have proper food, you get a first course and then a second course. <laughs> oh, what did you get for the main dish? I got grilled cheese here. Oh, look at it. Oh, yeah, it looks cheesy. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, cheesy. Of course, you Dutch with the cheese. <laughs> Everywhere's cheese. What did you get, John? Mm, same as you. Yeah, same as me. Oh, yeah. We got a uh, fried seafood, huh? Oh, here's the white wine. Hey, white wine. White wine. Nice, huh? Wine and wine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, buenissimo, eh? Ching ching. The next morning. And here's the entrance to the Lecce Old Town, Gate of San Blaze. Wow, this is truly blazing, eh? Yeah, look at it. San Blaze stands on top of the gate. And you go down into these holes. And the Old Town is right in front of you. And just a few steps in the center, you have this gorgeous Basilica. Oh my god. This is the St. Cross Basilica. Yeah, I think this is the best one here in town. Ooh, look at this. Yeah, you can see all of these animals and human figures supporting the upper level. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Yeah, you have a dragon, you have an eagle, that's a lion, and a poor guy. Yeah, and that guy looks particularly funny. <laughs> well, up here you have saints as well as angels. Every single corner, nook and cranny, crammed with all kinds of decorations. And the history just doesn't stop coming. I'm now here in the middle of the Charles V castle. Just uh, another one of those grandiose castles built by many of the kings. This one is built in the 16th century. And now I'm in front of the cathedral of the entire city of Lecce. And you can see it is absolutely a triumph of Baroque style. Whew. 
yeah there's some kind of pope standing in the middle and uh, the city's crest on the top yeah it's built in the 15th century but it has been a center of basically the entire religious lifestyle in the entire city ever since holy moly it is absolutely stunning in here and you can see behind me it is a door but on top is the sun and the moon i know the light doesn't work very well but trust me that is the sun and the moon and it's shaped exactly like what you would expect and then in the hallway the entire roof as well as every single column is decorated to the brim as well as the mosaics and all of the tinted glasses from every single corner absolutely stunning Well, that is it for this part of my adventure here in Puglia. In the next part, I will take you to some smaller, more hidden places that are not reachable with public transport. And that includes the quiet seaside town of Otranto, the interesting port city of Gallipoli, and of course, the shining white castle on the hill that is called Ostuni. And we will never forget the marvelous Mar Bello Bello. So make sure you like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part.